Now, that equation that we were just looking at is a fairly all-inclusive. The first law is, you know, it looks simple, but it's uh, there's a lot going on when you talk about total energy, this term up here. Um, and we're going to try and simplify that equation in order to solve some problems. So one of those things that we're going to do is we're going to say, oh, really we're just interested in thermal and mechanical energy. So here we have kinetic energy and potential energy as mechanical energy, and then sensible and latent energy as uh, our thermal energies. And if we just have those types of energies, in other words, we don't, we're not concerned with electrical energy, wave energies, uh, chemical energies, nuclear energies, we're sort of putting all of these in a category over here, then we can change the equation so that it matches this. And you'll notice we don't, we don't have the total up here as a subscript anymore. This is just mechanical and thermal energy. Uh, and then we have an E in and an E out and an E gen term, and that is generated energy. So if say we have some uh, wire with a resistance that's producing some thermal energy, we just call that generated energy or a, a, a you know, radioactive material that's giving off thermal energy over time. We just call that generated energy and that simplifies our calculations. Another way that we simplify the first law is to close our system, to say that there's no mass uh, crossing those boundaries. Uh, and that makes things a lot easier because we don't have to deal with the uh, temperature and flow speed uh, uh, and the pressure of that fluid that might be entering our system. Uh, and this reduces our equation to this, where again, this is mechanical thermal energy over here. There's no little total subscript. Um, we have Q thermal energy coming in or out. We have work uh, if the system is doing work or having work done on it, uh, being compressed or expanding, uh, and then we have an energy generation term. We can expand this a little bit just to remind ourselves that Q dot means, okay, we've got a Q coming in and potentially a Q going out. We've got work done on or by the system. Uh, and we want to remember that work done on or by the system is about expansion and uh and contraction and compression. So this is actually, we're not gonna do a lot with work in this class. A lot of times we can get rid of that work term as well if we have a closed system, in which case then we're only dealing with um, Q in and Q out and E gen. One final uh, <laughs> simplification is this really long list of assumptions here. Closed MT system, no phase change, no boundary change, no flow no change in potential or kinetic energy. Um, that seems a little uh, ridiculous uh, to have that many assumptions, but it actually describes a lot of systems that just have, if we're talking just about a solid or a static fluid, uh, and it uh, reduces that equation quite considerably uh, to this guy down here, where the E dot of our system, the change in energy of the system, is only about the temperature of the system. So this is our calorimetry equation um, that describes how energy is related to the change in temperature. So temperature becomes the only variable over here, presumably mass stays the same and our specific heat is going to be mostly constant. Uh, and then that's going to be equal to whatever is flowing into or out of that system and whatever energy is being generated in that system. Now, you'll notice that we used a little Q here. Uh, and the reason I did that here is because that's what we'll use most of the time from here on out. That's the Q, the big Q dot is a thermo uh, lingo. Uh, the little Q is our heat transfer lingo. And so that's the, the rate of uh, heat transfer. Okay, so just a reminder, all of those equations that we've looked at are just simplifications of this fundamental first law of thermodynamics. Um, when we solve problems, we wanna try and simplify that equation because we don't wanna deal with all the different kinds of energies and all the different ways that mass and, uh, and work can happen in a system. And so we try to simplify and we ask ourselves, can I get rid of 
non-mechanical thermal terms and just call that EGEN. Most of the time we're going to be able to do that. Um, in fact, I can't think of a problem that we don't, <laughs> we don't do that. Is it a closed system? Is there mass moving across this boundary? Uh, if not, it simplifies our lives. And then can I ch reduce the change in energy to a change in sensible heat? That's a question of phase, right? If we don't have any phase change here, um, then all of our change in energy is going to be represented by a change in temperature. Uh, and we can change that E dot term uh, to a DT, uh, DT, a change in temperature over time. Once we've simplified that, remember these are all going to be rate equations. That's what those little dots are. Then we can use the rate equations for convection, conduction, uh, and radiation to solve uh, for the flows into and out of a system. So that's where we'll turn next uh, in the first couple of days here is remembering what those rate equations are uh, back from our uh, intro physics classes. And now we get to <laughs> enough pictures of potatoes. Let's heat up some potatoes.